We're talking on this program about the double nature that most of us have experienced in our present lives. That is, we have a good nature, a good side to our personalities, but we seem to have this evil side that rises from time to time. We like to think it's from time to time, except that as the years pass by, it seems to become more frequent. You may say, oh, no, no, I'm getting more control of it. Well, we get cleverer at repressing it. Repressing is, uh, of course, unconscious suppression. And we get better at repressing it, but from time to time it still bursts out and we find our temper and our anger worse than ever uh, it was before. Uh, some of us find our unclean thoughts of lust uh, stronger than we ever experienced before. Some of us find our sarcasm and our caustic comments more vicious than we ever knew them to be before. And so that evil nature is something that even though it appears to be tamed a little more, it's simply repressed a little more, but it still creates tremendous strain in us and still makes us feel we're really hypocrites underneath. What we have been saying is that that double nature comes from two attitudes to the world. One attitude is that there is no creator, there is no God, and so we're on our own here, and all we can do is look out for ourselves in the best way possible and get all that we need by the strength of our own will. The other attitude is that there is a creator, someone who has made us and someone who really cares about us and is a dear father and knows you by name. And uh, we can trust him. And we don't need to depend just on people or circumstances or things for our security and our significance and our happiness, but we can actually depend on him and our friendship with him. And that brings, of course, great relaxation, great rest, a great trust, and, of course, produces all the good motivations that form the good side of our natures. What we have said, of course, is that understanding these two explanations doesn't enable us to live always by the good side of our natures. Indeed, it seems the more we understand about the evil side, the stronger the evil side becomes. And the reason for that is that this evil nature has been bred into the human race from the beginning of time. In other words, for generations, some of us men and women have lived as if there is no creator, as if we're utterly dependent on ourselves for getting whatever food, shelter, and clothing that we need. And so we have bred into our children, and they have bred into their children, and into their children's children, until it comes right down to you, a tremendously insecure neurosis that lives as if it is a fiddler on the roof that lives as if there's nobody to look out for me but myself, and that lives in constant fearfulness that the other guy will get the drop on you. And so we have built into us that fearful anxiety, that angst that makes us fear uh, some imminent disaster that is about to fall upon us. Even when we seem to have plenty of money in the bank account, this evil, selfish nature inside us causes us to wonder if we have enough in order to meet some imaginary problem that may come up. So we find ourselves incapable of controlling this evil, selfish nature, and it's because it has been bred into us through generations. So you remember we've often talked about good breeding and about certain people having breeding, and we've talked about uh, a good strain in a certain family that creates certain attitudes to life, well, whether that can be defended psychologically all the way or not, the fact theologically and philosophically is that there is bred into us certain tendencies. There are tendencies. They're not certainly evil in themselves. They are strong tendencies, which we, in fact, have to submit our wills to and align our wills with in order to practice in our own life, but they are there very strongly. In other words, we find it easier to be selfish than unselfish, even though we all keep saying we should be unselfish. We find it easier to be selfish than unselfish. We find it easier to lose our temper than to keep our temper, even though we all argue that we should keep our temper. We find it easier to be impatient than to be patient, even though we all admire patience. We find it so often easier to be unloving than to be loving, even though we all praise loving kindness as something that we ought to possess. 
And it's because this sinful or self nature, this evil nature inside us, is older than the race itself, certainly as old as the race itself. And it's something that is much older than you yourself. That's why you find it so impossible to do anything with it. And what we have said is, that's why the only one that can do anything about it is the maker himself. It is so radical and so inherent a flaw in the human race that the only one who can fix it is the one who made the human race. It's like a manufacturing process that develops a certain flaw in it. And that flaw continues to grow and increase little bit by little bit until eventually it is so built into every product that the only thing you can do with the product is to recall it, bring it back to the factory, destroy it completely, and remake it without the flaw. That's what the creator of the universe has done. That's what this, all this talk about Jesus and his death and Calvary and the cross and all that stuff that we talk about as the gospel, that's why all that took place. The creator of the universe foresaw that you yourself would develop that flaw, that you would develop within you a self-nature that you could not control. He foresaw that from before the beginning of the world. And he recalled you and put you into his son Jesus and destroyed you there. And his son bore all the pain of God's wrath, destroying that old self-nature of yours. And he recreated you anew as he raised his son from being dead. So that you actually this moment are able to live this moment, if you choose, in the unselfish, pure, and clean nature that God has given you in His Son. That's a fact. It's a cosmic fact. In other words, the big issue is not so much Jesus' death in 29 AD. That is just the temporal expression in space and time of the miraculous event that took place in timeless eternity before the world was. There's no problem, of course, in that when you consider that the infinite mind of the Creator is able to see time as one great present moment. That's why you were really remade again before you ever appeared on this earth. Let's talk a little more tomorrow about that amazing.